What is up guys, you're Riddles, your boy Kagi, back at it again with a new video, and in this video I bring you Wild Forest, it's a brand new game, the Roaming Network, it's probably one of the best games I have seen so far in Web3 in this year, and I'm not even kidding, this game is pretty complete, this game is on mobile, it's on your iPhone, it's also on your Android, imagine something like Age of Empires meets Clash of Clans or, or Clash Royale, I mean it's really addicting, it's a very competitive game, but it's also kind of simple at the same time, so it has all the elements together reading through the white paper there's also a massive potential for clan wars for guilds it has all the juice it needs i think this is a great move by sky mavis i mean one of the best games they have brought so far it appeals to the mobile community it appeals to esports it appeals to guilds i mean it has all the juice in this video we're gonna break down the game and we're also gonna break down the white paper to see how does the future economy of this game looks like so make sure you like make sure you comment make sure you subscribe let's jump right into the video if you guys want to try out the game make sure you fill out this form i'm gonna leave the link down below you can either do it for android or for your iphone now let's go ahead and break down the game if you guys want to look into the white paper make sure you use the timestamps and jump into the white paper so we're gonna do a little tutorial of how this game works first things first you got right here some trophies this is something that you earn throughout playing you can play either against bots or you can play against actual players Layers. It's right here you got the battle pass as you can see they already have a complete battle pass you can't really buy this one yet but you can see how it works you can actually collect and claim rewards you can also open up this chest this chest is going to give you some shards you're going to use the shards to be able to upgrade your heroes all right so right here you got your units there's different tiers of units the first tier right here is kind of the first tier that you use at the beginning of the game they don't cost a lot they're quicker to make then you got tier two right here these are basically like mid game and then you got tier three this is your end game if you wanted to upgrade any of these cards you can see right here that i have the green button right here you can see that i have five shards and i need two to be able to upgrade this one and it's gonna cost me 20 coins this shards you're gonna earn them as you play the game it's gonna level up the health it's gonna level up the damage it's gonna level up the speed or attack range let's go to battle and let's see how the game actually works first thing you want to do is send your first soldier right here you want to probably create a barrack right away the barrack is obviously where you create your soldiers right here on the left side you got the mana you're gonna go ahead and create a mine mines actually help you get more mana quicker you probably want to create another barrack right away you want to move your soldier create another soldier send it to another territory and take over something that you might want to do in the middle of the map is maybe create a turret or a tower i mean right here you're going to go ahead and create a mine as well maybe another barrack i'm already fighting here so i'm going to go ahead and send this soldier right here send another one here to make sure i don't i don't die that quick boom 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 and as you can see it's gonna cost me mana as i deploy soldiers so you gotta kind of manage that take over this territory perfect i'm gonna go ahead and put a tower and i'm gonna go ahead and upgrade my barrack up here so that way i get access to tier two this one i'm gonna upgrade it so it has more power as you can see on top there's nighttime and daytime during nighttime you kind of get this fog where you don't get to see the other player's territory and that allows you to kind of make moves without the other player knowing unless another player sends a soldier like they're sending right here i'm gonna go ahead and probably upgrade this one i'm gonna put one of the tier two soldiers right here boom i'll put a healer you see that turret already doing some damage there and i'm gonna create kind of like, like a little group so i can go attack their base right here as you can see you can also pinch on the phone right here and create groups as you can see this is grouped together so all of these purple are gonna be together i'm gonna assign these healers to this group you can create multiple groups right you can create i can create another group in the meantime boom 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 and kind of send them to do something else i can just be like okay go destroy this meanwhile i go destroy over here boom so distract i'm probably gonna get destroyed here no i actually won i destroyed the castle there you guys have it perfect perfect as you can see we got wf wild forest token coming soon 
Let's go ahead and read the white paper. Let's go ahead into the economy. A lot of people have asked me how the economy is going to work. All right, so let's go ahead and see what the currencies are for this game. You got the forest gold. Players can get F gold mostly from Trophy Road and Battle Pass rewards by improving the deck with F gold and shards. Players move higher in their league and get more valuable rewards, including F gold. Like I showed you at the beginning of the video, you kind of go through the process of the battle rewards and you get this F gold. You get to level up for free challenge entry free in-game activities limited shard purchases now let's see what the main token actually does utility unit card rank up unit perks reroll premium in-game purchases battle pass events nft sales and zeppelin nft rent sources decks pvp leaderboards clan leaderboards high league rewards premium battle pass quest events trophy road and it's limited on that so obviously they're not going to reward you that much in the trophy road which is kind of like a battle pass there's kind of two battle pass you got the trophy road and the actual battle pass the trophy road is kind of for everybody you don't want people kind of bought in the trophy road just to get those tokens right so that is the idea we have seen this fail in many other games where anybody can join for free and earn and boom and it goes to zero right so that's not the idea all right so let's go a little bit deeper into the economy we got token utility of course the token needs to have utility Utility. for me this is the most important part right here token incentives not rewards we saw many examples where uncontrolled token emissions and lack of sinks create a spiral inflation tokens have to be an incentive for the activities that enable the economy and players engagement leagues and leaderboard rewards create a fair incentive for the players to deeply engage with the game so i would imagine that most of the token emission within the game other than you buying it on a decentralized exchange or anything like that will come from actually competing in leagues clan wars leaderboards etc etc so that is kind of the best way to reward these days it's not just play and earn whatever the hell it has to be an actual effort that many people are trying to do or trying to get for that token to have a value for that reward to have a value it can't just be everybody earned because of yes you have to put in the work you have to compete and go get that reward Another way to reward is NFT rewards. A significant portion of the rewards being NFTs created a good economic balance. As NFTs are important drivers for the player's progression, they will naturally receive value. With more players coming to the game, the overall value of certain NFTs will constantly increase. So this is good. Skins, actual units. Um, and if you can trade those units and you actually earn units while you play and you upgrade them and then trade them, then it does have a value in the market. Some new players might be like, you know what, I don't want to put that much of a grind and they might trade and buy those NFT that you upgraded yourself um, from the market. Now, progression driven rewards. This kind of ties into token incentives, not rewards. Progression driven rewards, a direct correlation between the investment and the rewards are crucial incentive for progression. Players will naturally look to increase the rewards which will require investing in the game investments could be time skills and money progression is tight with the token which closes the economy economic loop players will have to look for the tokens to progress in the game and receive higher rewards so it's not that easy you gotta put in the work now this has me pretty excited the clans as you guys may know we have the juice team make sure you join our discord all right so this has me really excited because i really like this game even though i might not get to the pro level because that takes a lot of time it's a lot of meta it's a lot of heroes but having a clan allows you to work together and have people that are you know brainiacs and put in the time every single day to have the best meta so for me, clans are very, very important. And as you can see, you could have up to 50 members in your clans. So there will be clan tournaments. And for you to have a clan, you will need a clan Zeppelin NFT. So only one player within those 50 needs to have the clan Zeppelin NFT to be able to create that clan. So now, this is really cool. Clan Wars are time-limited clan competition. To enter such a competition, at least one clan member has to own or rent a special Zeppelin NFT. So you have an NFT, a Zeppelin NFT, you can actually rent it as well so there is an investment opportunity investment in quotations at the beginning of the clan where several clans are placed on the same map and their clan zeppelins are located at the same distance from one another clans are matched by the total pvp rating of their members so we ensure that clans are relatively equal strength are matched clans fight over territories and capture them in real time via individual pvp battles between clan members those victories and defeats define the amount of territory controlled by a clan the clan that has captured the most extensive area becomes a winner when a clan war season is over clans that earned more trophies in their groups are rewarded with valuable rewards 
WF token and rare NFTs. All clan members who participate in the clan wars battles and won trophies can claim clan chests with unique rewards and rare items. This is a, this is really 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 cool. Let's take a look at raids and collective goals. Raids are future cooperative gameplay. Players join together to fight against hordes of enemies or massive monsters for a war chest. More details will be provided at a later stage of this development. This is really, really nice. Now let's go quickly through the NFTs that they will have. You got the units, which is basically the heroes. You got spell cards that you fuse with your units, I imagine. Then you got the lords, which is a PFP. This will give you a few utilities for holders. I'm gonna leave the link down below for this white paper if you guys wanna read through all of this. Then we got unit skins really really cool i'm a big fan of skins then we got the zeppelin nft which is the the clan nft that i showed that i talked about earlier that you need to create a clan and then you got other nfts like emojis medals and banners really really cool i think this game has the right idea at the end of the day we have to see how it all works out everything on paper looks cool but at the end of the day everything has to be put to work so let's see how it works let's see how it develops um remember that economies have have ups and downs don't be like oh my god this is up 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 only when the token comes out it's not gonna be like that there's always gonna be fluctuation depending on the demand depending on how many people are playing but if this game gets to the level of clash of clans i mean there's always gonna be demand for the token there's always gonna be demand for the nfts and it has that potential it has that potential this could be a multi-million downloaded game in literally a few months we're still early in alpha and early access um, so don't judge it too hard, but if you can't see it, then there's something wrong with you. I'm very, very bullish on this game, ladies and gentlemen, because you know why? Because I like it. It's one of the first games that I actually, actually, actually like. I actually like it. And the sad thing is that I won't be able to, you know, basically go pro because I got to test so many games. And for you to be a pro in any game, you have to put in the time. You got to put in the same amount of time I put into playing a lot of games is the same amount of time you got to put in to pro playing. So if you want to play a game for and be pro, you got to put in 10 hours a day easily. That's how it works. Unless you're Asian and you're a brainiac like all the Asians. I mean, it is what it is. You know, I'm kind of jealous. I should have been Asian. Anyways, make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys next video. Peace.